Hello friends, Siksha here again. Today we are going to start with the third lesson of our plant growth regulators. Before starting, I would say, if you like my videos, please follow me on the Unacademy app. And if you have some queries or suggestions, please do let me know. I will inform you as soon as possible. So let's start. Today we are going to talk about the last two plant growth regulators that we have, ethylene and abscisic acid. Let's start with our ethylene. As usual, we'll start with the discovery. Ethylene was discovered by Cousins. Cousins is the name of the person who discovered it. He discovered the emittance of a volatile substance from ripened oranges. What he found that from the oranges, some substances were some substance was being emitted out in some volatile form. Later, he also found that this hasten or this fastened the ripening of the unripe fruits. This same thing caused the ripening of the unripe fruit, and it was also known as later it was known as ethylene. The general information that we have about ethylene is that it is synthesized in almost all plant parts and the precursor that is required for preparation of ethylene is your methionine. Methionine is a organic compound from there ethylene is produced of course ethylene is also an organic compound we had learned in our plant growth regulators beginning lesson that these are all organic substances. So what are the physiological effects and applications that ethylene carries in a plant growth regulators part? It inhibits longitudinal growth and stimulates transverse growth. Transverse in the sense straight like across or perpendicular like the straight growth and not along the direction. What you can say lengthwise transverse, transverse growth is lengthwise, longitudinal growth is breadthwise. Promotes senescence of plant parts mainly leaves I had told you we had a table earlier in promoters and inhibitors in inhibitors I had given that ethylene and abscisic acid but ethylene was a special case if you remember it has promoting part it has inhibiting part as well so you will be studying both of them it hastens the abscission like thinning of cotton cherry walnut hastens abscission means hastens the closure or the stopping or the death of the plant parts it enhances respiration rate during ripening see this is a uh, promoting function of ethylene the earlier were the inhibiting functions of ethylene now this is very important I want you to take a note of it that this increasing respiration is known as respiratory climatic very important question from examination point of view it breaks seed and bud dormancy promoting function it synchronizes flowering and fruiting in pineapple pineapple is an example quoted from your NCRT it synchronizes the flowering and fruiting it initiates flowering mango again a promoting or uh, uh, function of ethylene it promotes root growth and root hair formation okay A root growth and root hair formation in the sense it induces the development of adventitious roots in the various parts of the cuttings it promotes the development of lateral roots and growth of root hairs so as to increase the absorption surface it promotes more female flowers in cucumber now this is known as sex expression what does ethylene do? It increases the number of female flowers and fruits in certain plants. Again, we can see once again, you can see longitudinal growth promotes senescence. It promotes senescence in all plant parts like leaves, flowers and all that. Abscission, respiratory climatic, this is important. And your breaks the bud dormancy, synchronizes flowering, promotes root growth and promotes sex expression. There are also few more which you have to see elongates stem and petiole in deep water rice plant like in the sense both stem and petiole elongation in submerged and partially submerged aquatic plants is promoted by ethylene. Okay, So for example we have taken the example of the deep water rice plants that is there in your NCRT and it is also a very classic example that ethylene promotes this stem and petiole elongation in deep water rice plants. Now the most widely used form of ethylene like how it is commercially marketed it in the form of ethafon. Ethafon is a compound that is commercially sold which gradually releases ethylene when it is put or when it is given to the plant. Ethafon is readily absorbed and transported in the plant and it emits ethylene gradually to cause normal functions. This is all about your ethylene. Next we will start with our abscisic acid discovery and isolation. We don't have much information about the abscisic acid. Still, whatever we have, we will discuss about it in detail. Now, earlier in the mid 1960s, three independent researches were carried out, 
and three substances were reported which had almost the same sort of uh, chemical composition. The three names were given as inhibitor B, abscission 2 and dormin. Later they were all proved identical because they all had similar function on the plant and they had similar chemical composition also. Now what is the general information that we have about abscisic acid? It occurs in dormant seeds and buds. Now this is a typical inhibitor. This is not a mixed type of plant growth regulator. This is a typical inhibitor plant growth regulator. And its precursor is vilozanthin. Like vilozanthin is the first compound that is used to prepare abscisic acid. This is the general information, the discovery and the isolation. What we will see? The physiological effects and applications. It promotes abscission in flowering and plants as I had already told you. It promotes abscission. It inhibits the metabolism it, that is protein synthesis causes destruction of chlorophyll. Now you had earlier learned that your gibberellin was causing metabolism like protein synthesis and amylase uh, synthesis and all that and this is now inhibiting again. See again in the next point I have written it is antagonistic to gibberellin inhibits amylase formation in seeds. Now what was a gibberellin doing? If you remember I had told you that gibberellin was mobilizing the nutrients by preparing or synthesizing amylase and proteases. This is just working antagonistic to that. It induces the dormancy in buds and seeds. Again the inhibiting thing. It closes stomata under stress and intense desiccation. That is why it is known as stress hormone. This is a very important thing that you should know that which hormone is known as stress hormone. This is a very particular thing that can be asked and you should be knowing this answer from the examination point of view. This is a very common question that which is a plant growth, uh, which plant growth hormone is the no also known as stress hormone. Now, if there is intense transpiration in the plant, like if there is a very sunny day or very uh, like dry day due to which there is intense transpiration and the plant is losing more water than what it can absorb, the abscisic acid comes to play. It closes the stomata so that no more water can be lost via transpiration and the plant can retain. And in every way what abscisic acid does is that it helps in abscission or it helps the plant to slow down its metabolism, to slow down its activity so that it can survive the unfavorable condition and when the favorable condition comes, abscisic acid withdraws, the promoting plant growth regulators come to part and then we have the other functions as usual. Hence, now because it is a stress hormone and I told you about the transpiration all, it is used as an antitranspirant. In plants like in experiments, it is used as an antitranspirant. So, this finishes all your plant growth regulators. Just a brief summary we will see. I have not highlighted anything here you can see because all these points are important. I have just put up a few typical points that you can expect as uh, like antagonistic function or synergistic function. You can see auxin and cytokinin are used in callus culture. Both have the function of promotion. Nobody is inhibiting the other or nobody is acting antagonistic but both have their own roles like auxin is used for root and cytokinin is used for shoot. Auxin content is more, there will be more root development and if cytokinin content is more, there will be more shoot development in the callus culture. Now, ethylene and abscisic acid again, they have synergistic function, they both promote senescence. Now, we have all the antagonistic points like apical dominance, it is promoted by auxin, inhibited by cytokinin. This you should know that which is promoting apical dominance and which is inhibiting. Same, similarly, amylase production I had told you, just now I told you gibberellin promotes and abscisic acid inhibits. Abscisic acid has inhibitory effect, gibberellin has promoting effect. Senescence again gibberellin acid promotes and auxin inhibits. Of course, these are not their main important role but still it is a point that gibberellic acid promotes senescence while auxin, auxin inhibits senescence. So that's all about your plant growth regulators and this finishes all the three lessons of the plant growth regulators. Please do watch them properly and just make a note of all the important points that you feel. If you feel that I have missed out anything, please do let me know. In the subsequent lessons of this uh, chapter of this course plant growth and development, I will include them too. So thank you and have a nice day.